My question is, the child that is born outside wedlock, is he or she part of the inheritance of the father? Our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said it is mentioned in Jamiat Tirmidhi, hadith number 2113. That any man who fornicates or who does zina with a woman, with a free woman or a slave woman. So the child is the child of zina. The child that is born is the child of zina. He does not inherit nor is he inherited from. From this hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we clearly understand the child that is born outside the wedlock, he does not inherit. So the child that is not born from a lawful Islamic marriage, this child does not inherit, nor is he inherited from. Just because a woman does zina with a man, this man does not automatically become the husband of this woman. So therefore, the child that is not born from a lawful Islamic marriage, the child will not inherit from the father and the father as well will not inherit from this child. The parents, they have committed a sin. So in this situation, they have committed a sin. But since the child is not born, from a lawful Islamic marriage, the child who is known as Waladu Zina, the child that is born from Zina, this child will not inherit from the father and the father as well will not inherit. So in any situation, the father will not inherit from this child, from this child and this child will not inherit from the father. So I hope that answers your question. We will take the next question. Allah is the most appropriate name for God in the Quran. Is this name Allah mentioned in other religious scriptures besides the Quran? In the Bible, God is referred to as Elohim. In Hebrew, Im is added as respect. It is the plural of honor and respect. In the Bible, God is referred to as Allah and the Bible with the commentary that is edited by Reverend C. I. Scofield, which is also known as the Scofield Bible. In this Bible, Almighty God, he is called as Allah and Hebrew and Arabic are not Western languages, but rather they are Eastern sister languages so the bible with commentary that is edited by, that is edited by reverend c i scofield the word ella it is spelled as a l a h and it is pronounced as e l a h ella in arabic it is allah a l l a h so the, difference, so the difference between Arabic and Hebrew as far as Allah is concerned, in Arabic it is A-L-L-A-H, in Hebrew, in the Bible it is A-L-A-H. So the difference is only the single L. Since Hebrew and Arabic, they are Semitic languages, therefore the correct pronunciation should be Allah and not Allah. And this word Allah, it is even mentioned in the Bible. It is mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 27, verse number 46, and in the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 15, verse number 34, when Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, when he was put on the cross, he cries out, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. O God, O God, why hast thou forsaken me? Does Eli, Eli, Lama Sabakhtani sound similar to Jehovah, Jehovah, why hast thou forsaken me? And the answer is no. Eli, Eli, Lama Sabakhtani, if you translate it into Arabic, it is Allah, Allah, Lima Taraktani. 
Hebrew and Arabic, they are Semitic languages. So therefore, Allah, Allah, Lama Sabaktini in Arabic it is Allah, Allah, Lima Taraktani. And the translation of this is, O oh God, O oh God, why hast thou forsaken me? Allah, Allah, Lama Sabaktani, it is similar to Allah, Allah, Lima Taraktani. And in fact, this phrase, Allah, Allah, Lama Sabaktani, it has been maintained in no less than 2000 translations of the Bible. Even though this is the Hebrew text, yet in the translations of the Bible, it this phrase has been maintained. From this, we clearly understand that even though the Bible it is corrupted, yet this phrase it is maintained in its original form. Yet in the Bible it is mentioned regarding Tawheed, regarding the oneness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It is mentioned in the Bible regarding the beloved Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. And this word Allah, it is even mentioned in Sikhism. Guru Nanak, he used the word Allah which in order to refer to Almighty God. And this word Allah, it is also mentioned in the Hindu scriptures in Rig Ved, book number 2, hymn number 1, verse number 2. The word Allah has been used which if pronounced correctly, correctly it is Allah. And in fact, there is a separate Upanishad by the name of Allah Upanishad wherein Allah has been used several times. God is referred to as Allah several times in Allah Upanishad. So we realize that the scriptures of the major world religions, in these scriptures it is mentioned regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even though these scriptures have been changed, but yet in the remnants of these scriptures, the word Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. In the remnants of these scriptures, it is mentioned regarding Tawheed, that is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is mentioned regarding our beloved Prophet Muhammad. May peace and blessings be upon him. I hope that answers your question.